Welcome to Spice Mantra. Today I'm making a red bean curry which is an alternate to the regular chili that you can make and also a five spice cabbage dish that you can make instead of coleslaw. And I'm also making a cucumber yogurt relish that you can make anytime. Let's get started with the red bean curry. I'm using a pound of canned red kidney beans. You can also use the dry ones. You use one cup and soak it in about five to six cups of water overnight and then you cook it for about 45 to 50 minutes till they are soft cooked and kind of like this. So then you drain the water, save the water if you're using the dry beans. With this you don't have to, you just wash the canned beans and uh, in cold water drain and reserve them. Just set aside. Um, the next thing that I'm going to be talking about is making the spices to add to the red curry, uh, red bean curry. The four spices that I'm going to be using are cumin, whole cumin seeds, cloves, whole coriander seeds, and cinnamon. This is a little different from the regular cinnamon that you get. This is from uh, India, so if you see the bark is lighter, um, it's a different flavor than the regular one. So, uh, but you definitely can use the regular cinnamon stick. You just need about an inch. Um, this one is a little softer, so it's easy to break apart. If you see that, I can just do it with my fingers. So, um, let's get started. What we have to do is dry roast all of these and um, cool them completely and then grind them in the spice grinder. So um, I'm going to be bringing this to the stove. I'm dry roasting the spices that I need for the red bean curry. So this is a half teaspoon of cumin seeds, a half teaspoon of coriander seeds, and uh, you just need uh, a few cloves. I have uh, three cloves here and one inch of cinnamon stick broken into pieces. What I do sometimes is I just make a batch of these but for this recipe I'm just showing you just a little bit because um, that's what we need for making uh, one pound of beans. So the important thing is that um, it has to be dry roasted very slowly. So right now I have uh, medium dry heat and uh, you know I'm using a little bigger skillet here just so that you can see it but you just need to use a very small skillet if you're using the small quantity. Of course, uh, you can always double or increase the proportions accordingly and uh, make a big batch, um, you know, up to a cup. Usually up to a cup is good because, um, you know, it has a shelf life. The fresher the spices, the better. So um, this is typically used in Indian foods. This combination is also called garam masala to some of you that are familiar with this. Um, it starts out with about four minimum spices and then it gets complex and you know you can use up to a dozen spices. Uh, it also depends on which region of the country you're from. Uh, typically this is used mostly in the northwest and uh, um, northeastern parts of the country as well as the middle uh, parts. South India tends to not use the cloves and cinnamon as much in their cooking, but cumin and coriander is heavily used. So what you're really looking for is to get a golden brown color and um, once it gets that, the aroma just fills the room and um, it's just, you can tell when they're done. So once they're golden brown, um, it, it, you have to really take your time doing it. So I'm not going to be showing, uh, you know, taking the time to do this here, but definitely make sure if you're trying this at home, um, take your time. Usually it's about seven to 10 minutes to get it nice and golden brown. Um, once that's done, you cool it completely and then um, take it off the heat, cool it completely in a, a small pl platter. And then what you do is the next step you use the um, spice grinder. Right now I have it all cooled and I did it already. I put some in here. So I'm just gonna grind that for you. 
So um, generally, it's a, this is a coffee grinder, but I have a separate spice grinder. I don't do any coffee in this. And uh, if you're using the coffee grinder, you definitely want to clean it up completely because you don't want your spices to taste like coffee. So what you do is just uh, pulse it, and you want to get a fine ground. Um, on the Again, uh, take a look at it to see what it looks like. Um, you know, you want it a really fine ground, and uh, this is what it looks like when you're done, and it smells wonderful. Okay, now that we have the spices prepared, this is what it looks like, um, and again, it smells delicious. Um, so I also have the onions already chopped, so you want to peel and chop onions, um, and we, we are using crushed tomatoes, three fourth uh, cup, three quarters of a cup, and then a half cup of diced tomatoes. You can use fresh or canned, and you can with the same thing with the crushed tomatoes. If you want to make it yourself, you can. Um, we're also using grated ginger. This is the grated ginger. I'm just going to show you a trick for peeling it that one of my friends uh, showed me how to do, and I just find that it just is so easy to do this. Um, it just goes into all of the corners, um, although this piece doesn't, but I can show you what I'm saying here. So it just kind of gets under. So all you're really using is a teaspoon, and it peels much better. All you're getting is just the peel and not pieces of ginger in here. So um, it's a good trick. And uh, I already had done that, and uh, here's the grated ginger. So um, we can just move on and get started. At this. I'll show you how to make the... Uh, curry. To make the red bean curry, bring a medium-sized skillet. In this case, I'm just using a, a medium wok. And uh, you want to bring it on medium-high heat and add about two tablespoons. I don't really measure, so you can tell. It's about two tablespoons of um, vegetable oil or canola oil. So that's about two tablespoons. Um, and then you add a medium chopped onion to it. So I'm just going to say that's a medium onion. And uh, then you add the grated ginger. So it's about one inch piece of grated ginger. And you just want to get them to be a little soft and just kind of soft and translucent. So about um, two to three minutes. And take your time doing this because you're just enhancing and blending the flavors. So once you get it to be soft, then you add a quarter teaspoon of turmeric. Turmeric is this bright yellow um, spice that's used in all Indian cooking. It has a lot of medicinal properties as well, but it's primarily used in all Indian cooking. And then you use a quarter teaspoon of cayenne. I'm being a little careful with this. You can adjust the heat. If you like hot food, you can add a little bit more. I kind of like it, so I'm going to add a little more. Um, and same thing, just keep stirring it to mix it well. And you can see that it's really getting nice and soft. And that's like an orange color even, that's brilliant. And then now I'm going to be adding three quarter, three quarter cups of crushed tomatoes. You can use tomato puree as well, but this gives it a little grainier texture to it and I like that. And then I have a half cup of diced tomatoes which is also again this gives you that bite um, that really blends well with the red beans. So with this one you want to be um, stirring for about five to seven minutes till it all comes together and um, 
in the interest of time, I'm not going to be taking that time to do it, but be sure to take your time to um, stir this. And it, it just has to cook and lose the raw flavor of the tomatoes. So about uh, five to seven minutes, and then it's time to add the red beans. This is about a pound of red beans. If you're using the dry, um, if you use one cup, it's just going to cook, uh, soak and uh, cook up to three times. So you'll have about the same amount. It smells delicious. You want to mix it well and now it's time to add the salt and um, I just add a pinch of sugar in it because sugar tends to get the acidity of the tomatoes and uh, it just enhances the flavors completely. So anytime I add tomatoes to anything that I cook, including pasta, I add a little bit of sugar to it. So. And salt, again, you know, you want to do up to a half teaspoon and uh, more or less to taste. And the sugar is just a pinch. You don't want to add too much. Same thing. You just want to fold it in gently, you know, and put a lot of uh, love into it, really. So that, that's also a major ingredient. One of the things that my mother said is that she said, be completely present when you're cooking. And, you know, a lot of people say that cook when you're, you know, take your frustrations off, punch the food. But on the other hand, uh, what my mother said makes sense. When you put a lot of love into it, you know, the food tastes that much better. So, yeah, take a different turn and cook with a lot of interest and love and the food is going to be really delicious, trust me. Um, one of the things I have a story to tell about the red kidney beans. Again, since I am from South India, I had never eaten this dish till I was about 15. And the first time I ate it, I was at a camp and uh, I just could not believe that there was a divine dish like this. So I went up to the uh, cook at the camp and asked him, how did you make this dish? He said, I can't really tell you. You should come over and I'll show you. So the next morning, he brought me and made this amount, really, because otherwise in a camp, he was used to cooking for about 200 people. And um, he showed me all of the steps that I took you through to make this dish. Um, and it was just delicious. And the funny thing is that, that the amount that he cooked for 200 and the amount that he cooked for me tasted the same. So he was obviously he was a amazing cook. So one of my inspiration comes from that. And um, I have uh, one cup of hot water in here that I'm just adding. So once you had the hot water, um, you just blend it all in, bring it to a boil, cover. Once you get it to a boil, you want to cover it and simmer it for about um, seven to ten minutes, not more than that, because pretty much everything cooks when you're stirring. So the water in there is just, it's also hot water, so it doesn't take long. Um, it's a very simple, delicious dish to make. Now, there's that one element that I haven't added yet, which is the spice mixture that we just made with the cumin seeds, coriander seeds, cinnamon, and cloves. So once you, this comes to a boil, you add the spice mixture to it. Again, this is not hot, so depending on how spicy and you know you want to go, you can go more or less. So I'm adding about a heaping teaspoon to this, and again, you know, you can adjust according to your taste. So it's already coming to a boil. That's because we added the hot water. Um, I always have some hot water because it just cuts down on your cooking time. It's always a good idea to either have a pot of water or a kettle of water um, going every time because when you're in a hurry, that's how it works. So when I come home from work, 
this is one of the comfort foods that I tend to make often. Um, this is a great bean dish and um, I hope you get to try it. And I'm, I'll be showing you the finished product in one moment. Here's the red bean curry, all finished and completed. Doesn't that look delicious? So now you have another dish that you can cook instead of the regular chili. Some of the ingredients are the same except for the spices and uh, the addition of ginger and uh, uh, cayenne. So, and some of you probably already are adding to it. Try this and I'm sure you'll really uh, enjoy it. The last thing I want to do on, on this is just uh, to garnish it. Sprinkle some fresh onion, uh, fresh uh, diced onion on it and uh, it's ready to go. You can serve this with um, rice and I have some rice right here and I'm just going to spoon that out. Mm, that smells so good. And now comes the good part. I'm going to try it. Mm, that's really good. I hope you get to try this at home. Now I'm making a five spice cabbage dish that's so delicious and it's an alternate to the coleslaw and it's really easy to make even though I'm saying five spices they are very very simple spices. So what you really need is a small cabbage and you just want to shred it and you can do this in a food processor or you can uh, do any which way you want. I really like the fine shreds on this because when it cooks you want it to hold its crunch but it's also cooked at the same time. So um, I'll just show you the way I do it and uh, again you know do whatever you want to do. Um, the easiest thing I find is to keep the knife really close when you're shredding and then you end up getting these fine shreds and so you get the idea. This is how it is. See that? That's how fine you want it. Um, sometimes the food processor doesn't quite do it, but um, hand shredding doesn't really have to take uh, too long. You just want to uh, take the small cabbage, cut it in half, and then uh, quarter it, and, and uh, you hold it in an angle. There are different ways of doing it. Once it gets halfway through like this, you just want to uh, shred it like that. It's really easy. You can have fun with it. And this is one simple dish that transforms the humble cabbage. Um, I also have a story about the cabbage, like I always have stories, right? Um, so this is one of the first vegetable dishes that I learned from uh, a friend. Um, she's from South India and uh, wherever Viju is, hi Viju. Uh, she showed me how to do this. Of course, she made it very complex. She used about um, a dozen spices in it and, uh, you know, she just... She was a new cook too, and you know we were young, so but the the result was delicious. So I've really narrowed it down to five spices. I'm using black mustard seeds, and of course, if you don't have these, you can end up using uh, regular mustard seeds, uh, like the white mustard seeds that you get in the market, and then um, whole cumin seeds, and uh, red chili. Uh, Flakes. So basically, when you get the red pepper flakes, what it is is you just crush it, and this is what they do. And you know, you end up having these when you uh, are at the pizza store, uh, the pizza place. This is how it is. Or when you get the bottled stuff that's really expensive, um, this is the crushed pepper. So I'm going to be using that. And then um, another spice that I'm using is turmeric. I, we use it all the time and uh, this is freshly ground uh, coriander uh, powder or ground coriander. The other thing I'm using to make this dish really special is coconut. You can use fresh grated coconut which is what I have here today. You can also use desiccated dry um, unsweetened coconut. You want to make sure it's not sweet coconut 
because um, you will end up with uh, a dessert instead of a um, alternate to coleslaw. So um, I'm ready to make the five spice cabbage and I'll walk you through the process. I'm making the five spice cabbage. Um, you need a medium skillet and turn the heat to a medium high. Two tablespoons of oil, a little more, a little less, doesn't hurt. And when you have a little bit more, you know, it tastes delicious. So you want to get the oil nice and hot. Then you add the mustard seeds. With the black mustard seeds, when the oil is nice and hot, it just starts popping and then, you know, uh, it brings out the nice mustardy flavor to it. So it's a little bit bitter, but um, so I'm using about a half teaspoon. Again, uh, you don't want to overdo this. Um, stay with this because it adds that bitter flavor to it. And with this, you have to be really patient. So while we are waiting for that, let me tell you a story about um, when I went to my mother-in-law's house. Like I told you, um, I said my friend had made this dish and I was really ready to make it. And uh, so when she was sitting down with the, um, a contraption that was kind of like a knife with a coconut scraper on it, um, I thought, oh, how, is, you know, how hard can that be? I can do it. So then I sit down on the floor. I made her get up and I sit down and I sat there, took the cabbage, the fine shreds that she had done. Then I really slit two of my thumbs, didn't know what I was doing. So, you know, obviously that cabbage didn't get cooked. So um, sometimes even if you think you know how to do it, it's always a good idea to, um, oh, my guest didn't turn on there, so sorry. <laughs> I had my story to tell, so basically um, back to this dish. It's, uh, it should be popping in a minute or so. Um, So once that starts popping, um, right now it's not yet, then you add the cumin to it. Again, um, half teaspoon. And I'm just gonna let those sit there and uh, raise up the heat a little bit to fasten the process. You just wanna be careful uh, and you know watch out so that you wouldn't be burning anything on it. So once that's done, I'm ready for my next the crushed red peppers. So um, you can use the store-bought ones. Uh, you can also buy these um, at the Mexican section sometimes, like the International Isle, or definitely in the Indian store. Uh, I'm using about um, two peppers for the cabbage. So essentially, you'd be using about a fourth teaspoon. And once that gets going, you just want to give it a minute or two. And because of my mishap, the um, mustard seeds are not popping yet. They should in a minute. Mm, it smells so good. The cumin kind of adds a smoky flavor to it. Um, in this case, I'm not really adding any ground spices to this at this point. Later on, we'll be adding some um, coriander to make this, uh, to enhance the smokiness of the dish really. Cumin and coriander are those dishes that uh, are used in uh, Indian cooking very, very extensively. They just um, have a um, smoky flavor that blends well with all vegetable dishes, rice dishes, curries, um, you know, pretty much everything. So there are um, a few standard spices that are used in Indian cooking. Um, let me tell you a little bit about the mustard seeds. They are extensively used in the South Indian cooking. You don't see them as much in the North Indian cooking or when you go to the restaurant, um, for most part, it's all uh, North Indian food, so you don't see that. Um, now you can see the popping. You can hear that it's changing the color and it started popping. So at this point, you just want to really uh, turn the heat down because you don't want to burn the mustard or the cumin in there. Um, now it's ready for the cabbage. 
So um, here I have a small cabbage. And um, you want to stir to mix it well. Again, I have my heat turned low because I don't want the spices to be burned. These are just perfect. They're golden brown. And anytime you think that something is burning, a good idea would be just to pull it off the heat. So now I have it on um, medium high. You know, you make a mess in the kitchen sometimes, and hopefully you have someone else to come and clean up. If not, you know, you do it yourself. So here is the, um, you see all the spices coming through. And cabbage really cooks fast, so you don't need to add any water to it because, uh, you know, you don't want it to get really soft or uh, mushy. When it's cooked, uh, you, want to, you want the cabbage to have a crunch to it. Uh, it's kind of like coleslaw, this dish, uh, so you just want to remember that you don't want to cook it too soft. But if you don't like the, you know, raw, uh, sort of the crunchy cabbage taste, then you definitely can make it soft. Uh, just remember that if you cook it, it gets uh, reduced, so um, you probably want to use a little bit more for quantity. So at this point, I'm ready to add... Um, the turmeric that I keep talking about, everything has turmeric. So this one, I'm just using a small amount. You know, it's not even a four teaspoon here. I'm just using less than that. Um, same thing. Just keep stirring. And now I'm ready to add salt. A little bit over the shoulder for good luck. So that's about the um, same thing, you know, depending on how you like it. In this case, I have um, a little less than a half teaspoon because I looked at the uh, cabbage, it's reducing pretty fast, so I don't have to use as much. So, really, it's a judgment call. You want to, you know, add salt. Some people don't like much salt at all. Like my daughter absolutely doesn't. Uh, like food salty so uh, I leave it out and then at the end uh, add my husband likes salty food so um, although he doesn't add anything to it he just sometimes you know complains about oh this is not enough salt you know I'm like honey you can always add salt but he just thinks probably food has to be cooked perfectly because his mother always had the perfect amount of salt but um, again you know it's it's preference and how you want to do it that looks really good you know I like crunch in my food so I'm almost ready to eat it at this point but it's not done yet uh, now I'm ready to add the uh, coconut again I'm using fresh grated coconut you can use uh, desiccated coconut so that's about a quarter cup a little bit or more again you know with the coconut it's you can use as much or as little you don't want to overdo it though because this dish is uh, it's five spice cabbage um, you know it's not coconut cabbage or anything like that so pretty much after you add the coconut you just want to stir it for another two to three minutes not more than that um, and your dish is done pretty much and that smells delicious as well so see how it's not really soft cooked but it still has that crunch so at this point you just want to turn the heat off and um, you know you can put a lid on it and leave it for about five minutes so that everything blends together um, and but like I said if you like the crunch just pull it off and then you just garnish it and serve that dish um, that's the five spice cabbage I hope you get to uh, make this it's a really delicious addition uh, and it's so easy to make and now you know how to make it here is the finished cabbage five spice cabbage it's an alternate to coleslaw so it's really easy I hope you get to try and make this it's very easy all I'm doing right now is garnishing it with um, the coconut again you use fresh or desiccated unsweetened and 
this is a delicious dish. And I'm just going to try it just because I can't wait to plate it. Um, I'm going to try it again, but right now I want to eat it and I want to get that coconut in there too. So, mm -hmm. that just took me back so many years when my friend f first made this dish. And it's equally delicious, even though I'm talking with my mouth full even though she used so many more complex spices. Just five spices and you end up making a great side dish or an alternate to coleslaw. I hope you get to make it. Now I'm making the cucumber yogurt relish, which is a very refreshing dish to, side dish to add to when you're making spicy dishes. It just uh, brings out the balance and um, almost every Indian meal is a accompanied by, by uh, raita or um, the cucumber yogurt relish. They're made with different vegetables, but this is a very typical um, relish. Here I have uh, a cup of plain yogurt. Uh, you don't want it to be flavored because this is uh, one of those dishes you're going to be adding flavors. So you can also use Greek yogurt because that's nice and thick and creamy. So um, I have a cup of uh, plain yogurt. This is uh, low-fat yogurt. You can use um, whole milk. It adds to the taste. So uh, what I'm doing here is I'm just whisking it to make it nice and smooth and creamy. Uh, kind of like to mimic the Greek yogurt. Sometimes that tends to be a little more expensive, but it also really tastes delicious. Greek yogurt is pretty much um, yogurt with all the water removed. That's why it's uh, creamy. With this one, um, I did drain out some of the water, but not all of it. So, um, because what happens is when you add cucumbers to it, cucumbers have a lot of water in it, so it just kind of um, does become watery. So, I did get some water out. Um, so, as you can see, I just got like all the little lumps out. Um, it's nice and smooth. And now I'm just going to be adding um, some garlic to it, a clove of garlic. So I have it already peeled and so you just want to crush it and chop it. Mince it really fine, as fine as you can go because you don't want to be biting into a um, you know, piece of uh, garlic in there because that can sting. Um, although for those of you who like the garlic, you can absolutely go ahead and uh, you know, do it like a rough mince if you like that sort of thing. But usually for company, uh, you, know, you want to mince it and uh, really get it fine and sometimes uh, if you add a little bit of uh, salt to it it just keeps it nice and um, together and just kind of enhances the flavor a little bit so I think that's enough um, I have this and so I'm just going to add that to the um, yogurt that I um, made it nice and smooth so Again, I'm going to blend those together. Um, you know, don't have to be too fussy. You just uh, get it all nice and soft um, and smooth. And then uh, I'm ready for my salt. So um, it depends uh, how much salt you like. In this case, I think I'm just going to use about a fourth teaspoon. And maybe I can add a little bit later. Um, but you don't really need much. Again, um, a pinch of sugar, not much. Let me just add a little bit more. And uh, same thing, nice and smooth. And this is really simple, you know. Um, if you wanted to add some more herbs to it, you can um, cilantro, mint, but for most part, you know, you can just keep it uh, nice and uh, plain because you don't really need a whole lot for this. The next thing that I have is um, this is one cucumber. It's peeled and seeded, so you know you don't want any seeds in there because it's not fun to bite into a cucumber seed. So uh, it's, uh, and I have it diced, you know, um, really small dices. Again, uh, if it's too big, you don't want to bite into it. You want all of the creaminess of the yogurt coated really well. So I'm going to add that in and get all of it. And at this point, you, you don't want to whisk it too hard. You just want to like gently fold it and I think I'm just going to get a spoon instead of the 
visk here and I just like it just like that you know sometimes I come home and I have yogurt and cucumber and I can just eat it uh, with a little bit of salt and sugar but to take it up a notch um, and if you're serving it for company you know you want to make it nice and fancy my hands are really clean so clean up the side of the bowl uh, nicely like that and uh, you know always check the taste if you want it at this point um, I just know that from, from making it so many times that it'll be perfect the way it is but this is a good time to check the taste if you want it because once you put the garnish then um, you don't want to be disturbing it and also uh, if you're going to be using this later this is the time to make it and put it away um, in the refrigerator so that you can blend the flavors together so just before serving that's when you want to be adding the garnish um, to it so let me just clean that up a little bit and uh, add the garnish it's a good idea I always do that um, you know you make a mess but you make it all clean it up and then you know it looks good to go so the garnish is pretty simple um, if you are very sensitive to uh, cayenne you probably want to use some gloves um, I have iron hands and it doesn't bother me so you just want to sprinkle that see how it brings out the color on that it's just um, delicious and just so pleasing to the eye and I just think that we eat uh, first with our eyes if something looks good it's all you know you always want to eat that you want to try that dish so um, I think that's enough I would probably put more but I won't and then this is um, whole cumin that was uh, dry roasted and um, ground up in the spice mill so uh, again a little sparkle and sometimes again like I said you would be able to add some mint and cilantro to that I'm just keeping it fairly simple today and so that's the pinch this is not hot so you can use uh, a little bit again um, it has the smoky flavor to it and it's just such a good blend and it's refreshing and uh, a palate cleanser because you have the yogurt and the cucumber and uh, garlic in it and then the garnish is just the um, cayenne or it can be red pepper um, ground red pepper and um, ground cumin so here you go and again I definitely want to taste it mm. doesn't need a thing that's delicious you just get a little bit of the heat but the cool um, cooling yogurt just takes care of it so if you're not too crazy about the garnish you can also blend it in before you eat if you don't want to be hit by the heat so um, that's the cucumber yogurt relish easy to make and you should try this at home here we have all the dishes completed for today's um, episode um, we have the red bean curry then we have the five spice cabbage and uh, the cucumber yogurt relish and a plate I have a plate ready for Dave Oppenheim um, Dave welcome he just uh, he has a show fun for foodies um, on Medfield TV don't forget to watch uh, I've seen him cook and he's wonderful oh thank you very much and uh, <laughs> Dave just happened to be what were you just happened to be in the neighborhood yeah and I, I I just wanted to see how this was done in a, in a home kitchen and see what the setup was like and what it's like to cook like that because the, the, the only shows I've done have been at the Medfield Center with lots of people and uh, this is a great way of doing it. I, okay, I, so that, like that has a fun yeah. element too because you it have does. people encouraging it you. Does, and you got all these people uh, True, true. Things, so, so, you know, it depends on how you like to do it. For me, I like, you know, uh, I like people but when I'm cooking sometimes Yep. Uh, you know, when I've been doing shows like this, this works out better. Um, but, you know, no, maybe we'll I try enjoyed, switching. Yeah, well, <laughs> and I enjoyed uh, learning how to make these. Oh, great, so, okay. Um, so he's going to try and let me know how uh, this plate looks. Doesn't it look oh, good? It looks beautiful. It really And you also beautiful. know how to make it now, Dave. I do, but I, oh, well, can we write in to get Ab recipes? Absolutely, okay. yeah, absolutely. I wasn't, I wasn't taking notes. Yeah. And, so, and, and um, you know, same thing if you, you know, uh, make a request, give us a call and uh, we should be able to give you mm -hmm. the recipes. What do you think?
That's very, very good. Very good. Boy, I... Not too spicy, this, this, is it? No, it really isn't all that spicy. Yeah. And this, this would be a really nice alternative um, to slaw, especially because it's, you know, it's a little bit warm. Okay. So it has really, really nice flavor to it. And, um, and I believe you made a chili at the center the other I day. I did make a chili you? at the center. So. Yeah. So now you can tell me mm. how if this is different. Oh, this is much different. It's just delicious. All the spices, you can just taste all of them. And then there's the crunch. I don't know, is that from onion? Or? Yeah, it's got the onion, the little bit of the tomato, uh, the diced tomato we used uh, in there. It's very, very subtle, but very, very good. Thanks, yeah, Dave. It's, it's not, not at all like the chili I made. It's oh. just, which was good, but this is delicious. Oh, I guess, you know, people are sometimes afraid of spices, but it's, you know, it, oh, it should, doesn't hurt, so. It shouldn't be. These, th these are just so subtle, and they just are blended together so well. They're, oh. they're really terrific. Oh, now I'm very curious to know about the relish. And this one, mm, that is, again, that's just outstanding. Mm, excuse me. I've really never, ever tasted anything like quite like this. Oh, Dave, it's thank you. <laughs> really. So yeah, well, I'm going, you know. The creaminess of the yogurt and the, and the crunch, hmm. and then all the, the, the spices just kind of sneak up on you. And so simple to make. All it is is, you know, the yogurt and the garlic and, uh, and a few spices in it. That is just really, really delicious. Great. Thank you. So Absolutely. You so and much. you can make this at home. Dave can do it. So can you. Yes. <laughs> Until next time, this is Aditi Tate. I hope that you'll add a touch of spices to your cooking and make it special and exotic. Thank you for watching.